in the DBMS, like the uh, data management and the buffers, the memory management, and the file and access, how to access the, uh, so the file and the data operator, and also queuing optimization and execution. So, and more, actually. So, also, the DBMS engine includes the compiler part also, like the SQL compiler. So SQL is kind of command line. It's the end of the semicolon. Then the, when we submit the SQL, then the, it will be interpreted. Interpreter is one of, one of the major part of the database, and so, so on. So we will quickly go over the, so the each component in terms of the DBMS architecture. So if you already took the database, the design, actually I include uh, this part as a second half of the advanced database design. Because of that, it was really, uh, if you are taking the advanced database design, really in a hurry, because we need to complete the database design as well as the, this, the discussion. Okay, today I'd like to shrink to the, within a, uh, an hour, uh, of the, I will try. Okay, so we already talked about the such uh, the advantages of the DBMS. So uh, this is from abstraction. So data is abstract. So we don't have to worry about too much. We can use or, as a user, we can focus on the programming part, like the SQL and the database programming. Keep in mind, database programming includes two parts always, a SQL and the host program language. But sometimes you may not see the, the, such a the difference because it's uh, also abstract, like a component base. Inside, they actually implement how to connect the database, how to access the table, and how to retrieve, return, and close the database connection as a module, library, or component. So, however, inside this is still the SQL images, so you should be careful when you are doing the database program. And the administrator, concurrency, and the recovery, and uh, the checking. So it's a data model level. So as we this, uh, as we learn in the, the advanced database design, we select the database data modeling for for the data modeling. We select the entity relationship model. Okay. So we regard the data as probably uh, somewhere here the like the conceptual level model with the ER modeling. Reason is that ER modeling is a simple and uh, reasonably very powerful. It can model the most of the case. And also, it is very similar and uh, feasible to the relational database model. We can just follow the several steps. At the step one, entity is a table. And the relationship will be sometimes a table, sometimes a foreign key, sometimes a merge, and so on. And the multi, but there are several the, uh, the, the things we need to consider for the relational model, like the multi-valued one. Multi-valued is not allowed in the relational model, so we need to create another table and so on. So that is the reason we can uh, use the ER modeling. And free ER modeling is not only for the relational database model can be used for our real life model, okay? If you believe you are not very well organized a person, think about the ER model. ER model may define the same entity, same thing. So when you clean up your room, the first thing is you can collect the important one, okay? Useless one, throw it away, right? Important. Then the same topic, like the operating system, operating system, okay? So you can stack up the operating system. And the database, same thing, and this one. That is entity, that is entity type. And that is the ER model. And the using the ER model, we can use the relational database model to create the database. So this is a kind of step when we are doing the database design. Okay. I'm not going to explain the details of that. The each step we can the, uh, skip. You already know much about the ER modeling. Then finally, we have the relational database. So also, when you the research on your selected database, think about what kind of model, what, what kind of modeling technique can be used for your the selected database.
NoSQL database. Depending on the, your the type of NoSQL database, so you cannot use the entity relationship model. The good news, mostly NoSQL database, much simpler than the traditional data model in technique. Because it's a, because of the flexibility. But the graph database model definitely different from the column based data data model. So you can uh, research and find the, what kind of data model can be used for your, your selected NoSQL database. That's also an interesting part you can uh, search. Eventually what we want to do is uh, uh, build up this kind of table style uh, relation. So relational schema and the uh, instances. So it has uh, three instances. Cardinality is uh, three and uh, five attribute. So this is our goal. Then if we have uh, this kind of a relation, uh, we can create the database using DBMS that will be table. And uh, each the instance will be considered as the each instance is a row or the record. So then to access uh, such a data, the each modeling provides the interface. So in relational database model, they provide the SQL. Doesn't matter whether SQL or SQL. When I uh, learn the SQL language, we call the SQL, but sometimes it's just a SQL. It doesn't matter. Right now, officially it's called the SQL, but uh, especially in my the hometown, it's called the SQL. But it consists of two parts, DDR, data definition language, as well as data manipulation language. This one can create the data structure. This one, you are able to manipulate the data or access the data. I'm going to skip the this part. So you probably learn your the, uh, database course. The, this. However, when you the, the research on your the NoSQL database, you can the, also the focus on how to access your data. Most of the, the NoSQL database, they do not use the SQL style the interface language, but some of them, yeah, for example, the Cassandra, provide the Cassandra the CQL, CQL language. One of the main reasons is SQL is a generic and a very easy to use. So some of the mm, some of the NoSQL database provide the SQL style, the interface language, but most of them not. Instead, they provide API level the interface. So you can search whether they provide the API. Otherwise, later in the second phase, uh, second step, the when you implement your the NoSQL database, if they do not provide the API or the, any the interface level programming, so you are not able to access your database. Mostly they provide. Okay. So one of the uh, characteristics, important characteristics of the relational database is the primary key. Primary key is the reason for what? Processing data very fast and keep the consistency. So because this is a unique and should must exist, so we can use this one to access the data. And if the primary key so to check the primary key, unique and manner, we need to sort the data. Because it's sorted, we can use them at when we access the data as the primary key. What about the NoSQL database? We don't need it. It's a really strong the constraint, really strong the, uh, the rule to form a the database primary key. Also expensive. You need to sort the data to find whether it's a unique or manner and the same. <coughs> So most of the NoSQL database, they do not keep, they throw away the primary. Instead, they still has the, they still have the key. That key is the key. It doesn't have to be unique. It doesn't have to be uh, the number. Key is key. The, one of them is key value, the data type. So we consider data as the key. Key can be used for, as a key, just a key. It doesn't matter whether it's duplicate or not, it's used to search the data. The other data are value. That is a key value. So a lot of data that we have, that we process, is like a key value. It's 
relational database model is a very special case. Even we spend a lot of time, logical model, physical model, and create, and so it's a really special case. Well organized, well maintained. But most of the data that we have is just record by record. We do not know what is the key, what is the value. It's just the, the data. So NoSQL database supports such a thing. I'm going to skip the details of the, such a constraint. But for your quick reminder, primary key constraint. Primary key constraint consists of entity integrity constraint plus key constraint, unique and number, and foreign key constraint. So foreign key constraint, the reference, the A to B, like that. And we have check the customized constraint. So for that customized constraint, we can use trigger or assertion. So trigger is supported, plus there are many other constraints depending on DBMS, in the relational DBMS system. So this is the foreign key and referential integrity. key. What about the NoSQL database? Do they keep the, such a, uh, the integrity block constraint? Probably not. This is a very strong and very expensive. However, because of this, it's really consistent. Because of that, still reused. What about the spanner? Spanner, they try to pursue the such a constraint. But they, if they keep the, really keep the consistency, they may lose other things, who are very difficult. So they try to have their own different data model, okay? Behind, they actually they calculate the batch job and the real view, then combine. So that's the one thing you can uh, uh, check. How, if your selected database claim is consistent, then how? Probably I'm going to ask how the, your selected database the maintain the consistency. With the, most of them, most of the SQL database is a scale of this which means in terms of cat theorem, it's a partition tolerant. Okay? Then, if you are saying the consistent, how? How to support such a thing? You need to research such a thing. And finally, purely language. I'm going to skip the purely language. And low level. So, basically, the, when we access the data from the hard disk drive, it's so either random access and the sequential. Database actually support both of them. Sometimes we need to sequentially read the data. But the most of the case, random access. Unlike the operating system, operating system use what? Offset of the file, okay? Offset of the file, ad address of the file, offset of the file is support the random access. But database, utilize the structure of the relational model, which means table and each record, and the physically database use the block also. If you remind the operating system file system, operate OS file system, the file system used the, such a block based. So what is a block in terms of an operating system? Block is Data structure. For what? I, input and output. So that is a basic unit of input and output. So most popular, the size of a operating system block is 512 by. Probably power of 2. Multiplication of power of 2 to the power of 512 is the time, okay? So 512 byte, which means when I read the file, data in the file, so I need only add one byte of data, but entire block will be returned by the disk controller. So waste of the resource, right? Why, do, why does the operating system return block by block, not byte by byte? Why? Why? to reduce the seek time. But one 
byte or 512 byte, six times it's the same. Yeah, but most likely if you want one byte, you might need one Yes. Byte. So most of the time, when I read the one byte, cons uh, consequently you will read the, not always, but the most of the time, read the next one, next one. Because our data is not just a byte by byte, it's a byte sequence, like a five. So it may higher chance. So because we cannot read a byte, they cannot directly send to send back to the CPU. Instead, it's always go to the memory. So if we keep the, such a block 512 byte in the memory, we don't have to read it again. Instead, read from the memory. So that is the idea of the such a block based approach. What about database? In the physical library, what about the database? The database uses the almost the same technology used in the operating system. Block based. It has block. So file is a heap file. In the operating system, what is a heap file? Heap. Dynamic. It's a memory. It's a heap. What's the characteristic of that? Just add, add, add the data. It's not order the file. Just uh, you can put the data, like the text file. Okay, that is a heap file. That heap file, how can you make the heap file? You can connect a number of blocks. It's not actually in the hard disk drive. This much the area is for the heap file. No. Instead, it has a block. Block, 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 block. This file, then this file, this, this block, this block, this block. Connect the number of blocks that make the heap file. Same approach in the database. When we create the employee table, employee table in the logically, logically means in terms of data structure, all the relational database model, it has number of record. This number of record is not sequentially inserted. Is that this employee file, the table has number of So database block is larger than operating system block. Always multiplication of the operating system block. For example, most popular, the, if you, your system, database system is the data warehousing system. So mostly batch job, like the big data system. Block size is bigger or smaller? It's a bigger. To reduce the IO. However, if your system, database system, is a banking system, like the online transaction processing, is it smaller or larger? Smaller. For what? Fast response time. So that is the uh, data block size. That the block can be the, con the link to make the heap by that is the employee table. So in other words, if you <laughs> develop the EBM system, then you need to define what is your block data structure. What is the size of the block? Each block has the data structure also. To manage how many records, what is the pointer, offset of the first record, second record, and the so on. Also, you need to maintain the free space. So almost all DBMS has a, such a free space for future updating or deleting the data. Otherwise, if you pack the whole entire block, but update the lead as list, there's no more space. So you need to think to the another block. How many are you? Two are you. To read the one data, you need to actually three multiple are you. This is the chain. So chain block really the hard performance of database that if you frequently update because of this characteristic. So we are going to have maintain each block has a free space. So in case of the update, instead of create or locate another chain block, release here. Then it's just one item. Even this one will be full. So from time to time your the block is chained to with so to avoid that, you need to reorganize. So 
So you probably heard about the reorganization in your operating system class and the database class also. Reorganization means backup and delay, recreate and upload. Very simple job, but very important for administrator. So it takes a time. Some of DBMS support online reorganization. Is it easy? It's a little bit problem, like the synchronization. What if that data is updated? So you need to maintain the so system definitely slower, but a little bit risky. Best way, shut down your system, back up, and recreate, and upload. So one of the really tedious job, but important job of a database administrator is reorganization. Actually, that was one of the my reasons why I quit my job as from the database administrator, then decide the starting of work. So every weekend, almost every holiday, I should do the, this job, right? And the mostly that job is the overnight, because the system should be online, weekday and daytime and the normal day. So I cannot enjoy the holiday. I cannot enjoy. Oh, my wife almost killed me. <laughs> this side. This, uh, I heard a couple of my friends still, the, even though the DBMS support online the organization, still the offline the organization is uh, the offer. Okay, so but database support random access also using such a blog ID, database blog ID, and more ID also. Each record has the ID. So using that. However, sequential searching, sequen sequential reading the data record, line record by record is also the supported by the database. <laughs> so this database is also based on the block. The biggest block size ever I seen in the relational database is uh, the several megabyte and maybe parcel. But in nowadays big data system, like the Hadoop that you studied the last few weeks, it is 64 megabyte, even 128 megabyte, because of this list. I'm going to skip this part. So please, uh, I realize that many of the students uh, ignore or the, do not understand the block. Block is the basic item in many of the, most of the, uh, application. So please, the, then also when you measure the like the performance, you can check the number of blocks, whether and uh, even how many blocks are from the memory and how many blocks are from the hard disk drive. It's called the heat ratio. So the more, the, the higher heat ratio is the better performance. So like the nowadays database is 97 to even the 99% of the blocks are from the cache memory buffer. So also sometimes pre-fetch. So you can upload the even though it's not requested, some of the block frequently accessed block will load into the memory buffer. What about the operating system? Windows uses such a, a technique. In Windows, it's called a page in the memory structure. In the memory management, we are going to divide the memory by the page, fix the size of the unit, okay? Then page by page, we can replace. So that is a, uh, the memory replacement, page replacement algorithm, and then the, we can consider the extension of the memory as a virtual memory. So we can bring up, bring out, the slot in and out, page by page. That's the page approach. Then that page, when you start, one of the problem of the Windows is it takes a time to start up, and when you click, it takes a time. So why don't we prefetch, which means load the several page of the file or the application program to the memory. Nowadays, memory size is bigger and bigger, so that is the reason. So if you are going to the even um, test manager, you can select a several program as a study mode. That means it's a pre-fetch, pre-loaded into a memory. So 
you name later when you click when you start the program, it will be faster. Actually, because it's a prefetch. Database, you can do the same thing. Some of the table when you start up the table, like the small table bar that is a frequently accessed, then that table can be loaded into the memory. Because of that, we can keep the very high level at the 99% of the um, hit ratio. So first time the basic approach to implement a DBMS system, we can use the file. Okay? So operating system file. So we can uh, create the file for import. Then that file is a heap file. In case of a non-order file, it's a heap structure, so a number of blocks and so on. So it is easy to implement because we can use recycle, not recycle, we can use the operating system file structure. But problem is a slower because anyway we need to use the operation of the file system. Okay? Like the system library, system call flow to handle the file. App open and the read and the write or the close. Easy but the less performance. To address, we can use a row device. Row device means as it is without using file system directly access the uh, the device using offset. Only way is the offset of the disk drive because it's like the row, nothing. So byte by byte to so directly actually using the offset faster, but slightly difficult to handle. Them. If you are using file, you can just open in your programming. The if you develop the DBMS system, you can have open and read, write, and close. But uh, if you are using the raw device, you need to specify the device and uh, calculate the offset every time. For example, Oracle, when you create a database, you can specify either file system or the raw device. So mostly we are using the unordered file, which is a heap. So it has a number of pages, as I introduced, like that. Kind of doubly linked the list. Then the, we can have the set of such a pages, okay? Then the name is. Okay. Another one is indexing that I introduced. Okay? We discuss a lot in the advanced database design the how index is organized, including B3 index, B plus 3 index. This is kind of example of the one page, one block, okay? That has number of the row. This is a row ID. That is a, each block has the header information. So this is kind of directory structure. If you remember the file system, file system consists of a two part directory and a bone file. So it's kind of the header information directory information for each record. Oh, well, last one. It's a system catalog. Another benefit, the characteristic of the using database is it's a self-described nature. Self-describing means database, all the information, information about the database in the database itself. So we don't have to manage it separately. On the other hand, if you are using file system, you should know about the file. Then every time you need to change if file structure is changed. So this is good. This can be implemented by the catalog system catalog. Or I could call the, this uh, table as a catalog table. And about each DBMS use different name, but it's uh, basically the, uh, the same concept. In other words, if you want to be a database administrator, you should be very familiar with such a catalog table. Or I could provide a really rich for the uh, catalog database, so you can get the most of the information from the catalog by select. <coughs> the buffer manager, management, I already explained, the introduced about the buffer management, is cache, so to speed up. Then, problem is how to manage such a number of buffer. In terms of, what? we need to quickly define which one is the free, which one is not. 
and the, whether my the data is in the cache one. How can you find? The, they are uh, most of such a buffer management, not only the database, many of the cache-based uh, data management to use LRU algorithm. Least, least entry used algorithm. So you can uh, line up like a little list based on what? Frequency. How often data is accessed. The frequency access the list uh, the uh, listen to use one the top and the, the other bottom, then the, we can the, search from the top to bottom, then the, we can access the data. Listen. On the other hand, the most recently, MRU algorithm is doable, but this, the LRU, LRU is better than the MRU algorithm. If you remind the operating system, we discuss about the, such a approximation algorithm in where? Memory replacement. In the memory replacement, so we manage the, uh, the such a buffer using LRU or LRU approximation. Because LRU is the expensive algorithm, we need to count frequent. Then at the time, how to count such a, uh, depending on how to count the different implementation. Like the, we can use the stack data structure to manage them or counter. The same thing in the database. Database fully, really use a lot such a buffer management based on the LRU algorithm. That is the least reason to use the LRU algorithm. Pin or unpin means, uh, pin means this one is uh, accessed. So pin, we keep. Unpin means, so we are not going to guarantee. Better. So if we need a free space, we can take out. Dirty, the buffer means it's a change, so update it. So we need to keep the dirty buffer, dirty the page, okay? So that is the terminology of man the buffer management. The next one is the indexing, so I'm not going to explain the details of the such indexing here, but you can uh, in mind from the look back the, your the database textbook regarding to the index. It's a very interesting topic also. There are different types of index, primary index for the prime uh, key. Clustering is a group index, like the D anno in employee. It's not always the, the unique key can be indexed, no. Sometimes group data, group attribute can be that is clustering. Secondary index is the most popular one. The primary means is the index for the key. Okay? But secondary index is non-ordered key, non-ordered attribute. The currently most of the DVMS do not use ordered file. If you are using the ordered file, it looks like a good. However, whenever you insert the data, you need to order, sort, again, sort, it will be slower. So you can just use the heap file, just add, append, append. Then separately, secondary index is managed. Even for the key, primary key, we are going to use a secondary index for the primary key. That is the second, because some of the students confuse. Primary key is like a primary key index. No, it's a key. If you are in file, data file is a ordered file, then there might be key attribute for ordering. At that time, this is called a primary. If your file is not ordered, then the old index are secondary index. So when you are saying the B3 index, B plus 3 index, they are example of secondary index. Most of them are secondary. So in the secondary index, we have the B3 index, multi-level index, yes, B plus 3 index, B3 index. What is the difference between the B3 index and B plus 3 index? Between index is balanced, but internal node and the leaf node, all of them has the index key entry. The problem is, if your index is level five, 
Sometimes you can access the data from the first root node. Sometimes second level. Sometimes last one. We cannot guarantee. There's a upper bound of the number of nodes you need to access, but we cannot guarantee whether this is a one, this is two, this is a five. Why don't we make the really balance? Which means whenever we access the data index key entry, it should be the same number of nodes. So we put down all the index key entry to the leaf node. So that is a P plus 3. So P plus 3 is the most popular one. MySQL used the P3 index before, but nowadays mostly P plus 3. ISAM is the IBM pro. IBM used ISAM file. It's actually indexed sequence the, the file. File system, file data structure itself has the such a tree structure index. Okay? So before the relational database, so actually ISAM file itself has been had been used a lot to keep the to manage the data. So you probably we probably learned a lot how to insert the data um, for the index. But deletion is not that simple. Inserting is a simple, but deletion is not that simple. But I don't think uh, I fully introduced the how to delete. You can think about the if you're selected the NoSQL database, uh, say it has an index, then what kind of index? How to support the index? That's also interesting topic that you uh, you can uh, research. On. Then finally, query part. So, so all of these are for mostly consist concurrency as well as speed. So, query optimizer, query processor, focusing on the such a efficiency of the SQL. Okay. This is a basic architecture of SQL. I'm not going to explain. But select from is the I guess. This is the syntax from the my uh, SQL server. Because SQL server, old version of SQL, when, whenever you select the data, automatically put the distinct option. What is a distinct option? No duplicate. No no okay? Because the relational database model does not allow duplicate. So to mimic that the distinct we can use. However, how can you remove? How can you find the redundant duplicate data? You need to sort. Yeah. What happens sorting? It takes a time. So it so really mm -hmm. still exists some of the developer. The instantly just put the this thing. Okay? You don't have to. This thing, when you are using this thing, even though data is unique, it's the sort the data. Okay? So that um, you should avoid. Where is a condition for the join and the selection? Group by is a grouping factor, and having is a condition for the group by. And then order by is order. So even the order by is the same thing. When you are using the group by, order by, automatically, not automatically. Definitely, you need to sort the data. This is the, C, the SQL language. What about the your selected database? What kind of the interface or uh, query language does it support? So that's another thing you can search on. Then query processing, also interesting part. So I gave you the very high level overview of the query processing. There are different types of query processing. One is uh, uh, the uh, hybrid approach, which means when if you remind the relational algebra expression, so we can make the, the for the specific the query. So we can make the different uh, different ways of relational algebra expression, right? 
Somebody can join A, join B. Somebody can do the B, join A. Somebody can the select the later. Somebody can the select the earlier. Somebody project the earlier, somebody project the later. But as long as your output is the same, the idea of the credit. But in terms of performance, they are different. So, for example, do I need to keep the, all the information at the end? No. If you keep the, all the information like attribute, so you are wasting the memory. Also, it takes a time because a lot of IO. So, if we, you don't use the specific, the sum of the attribute, just uh, throw away using project. If you do not use the, all the data, you can take out them, take, take them out using selection operation. As early as possible, you can remove just such a data, then it will be speed up. That is a heuristic approach. After that, we can find the order of to access the data table. Sometimes, when we travel the three cities, including Dallas and uh, Orlando and uh, Boston, so what is the fastest route? What about the, this way? The Orlando, then going to Boston, then going to Dallas, and the going back to the New York? It's an in and out. So it takes a time. Instead, we try to travel from the nearby and the, the shortest path, find the shortest path. Similarly, the database, the query optimizer, try to find the fastest way. Output are the same, but the performance will be different. So that is the idea of the query processing. Even Sometimes we need to sort the data, like the group by or order by. When we sort the data, the less instance is the better. So we can apply the sorting at the last step in the sort. So sorting is always a problem in the relational database. For example, Oracle provides temporary space only for sorting. So you need to allocate the temporary space only for the sorting. And also they try to, the, one of the most popular asked question during the Google interview is, uh, why don't you implement a sorting algorithm for a given condition? Like the day we, they will give the, uh, they are not going to just ask the, the, the quick sort of bubble search like that. Instead, they give the, you have one the byte of the temporary space. Why don't you make the code for sorting the uh, array of the, this data, something like that then you can use that, or the sometimes the temp two temporary space. So you can uh, uh, implement, you should be able to implement such a sorting. The so database, as the each DBMS has defined, algorithm of the sorting to speed. Group by also required the uh, need uh, such a uh, sorting. Okay, so that's the end of the summon. 187 pages we complete, <coughs> leave it on. So you get a little bit idea of the, your research on the NoSQL database. So we are starting from the, such a, the, uh, the data structure or idea overview of the relational database so for the further discussing about the NoSQL database. So from the next week, the, we will talk about the details of the no SQL database. But next week, we are going to start with the presentation. Once again, the each student should be ready for the three minutes. So it's really three minutes. I'm going to give the warning. I'm not going to ask the much question so that can hurt your the time. Length, but sometimes I can ask a very quick question regarding to your database. Okay. Then the 10, 10 to 11 selected database will be the further step. So the other non-selected uh, database will be used for the backup, then I'm going to group by the two. I'm going to group assign, assign the group. So if you have the close friend or other, but do not ask me, I'm going to assign based on the, your the, uh, database type and the so, okay? Any questions? Okay, so we will see the next week. Unfortunately, our class is on Wednesday, even Though there is the full break, that's only for the Monday and Tuesday, the next week. 
and we after. So don't worry about uh, any great time for this class. We will continue to uh, have a lecture.